party people it's randy i am here for thunder horse descendant and i have a really fun project that i've been waiting to do you may have seen that i did the 1930s inspired um necklace last week <laughs> you guys mr bunsen just stole a big piece of chain off of my desk it's his birthday today he's one he thinks that he can do anything hey hey oh it's gunmetal bring it here bunsen maybe we can use it anyway <laughs> So, um, we still have the second strand from the meteor shower, um, portion to make. And then we also had these cage beads left over that we were going to do into earrings. So without further ado, let's flip and get to making something. All right, y'all. So here we are on the mat. This is the second strand that came with the Meteor Shower Duo. We used the red strand in the 1930s necklace. This is the one that we said we are going to make into a bracelet. And I think I'm just going to just do a simple elasticity bracelet. I was excited. Um, Beetleon had uh, sent black uh, stretch cord. And so I had never had black before. This is the one point millimeter, which I really like to make um, stretch bracelets out of. And I thought it was cool because we kind of had that whole like black and red theme going on with the, you know, with the necklace. So I thought that would be cool. Also, I have on here. Okay. Just use my beetle on cutter for this, I guess, since it's going to be silly. Um, also, I have here the cage beads that we saved out of the strand from Meteor Shower and one of the sparkle balls. I don't know if you guys noticed, I only put one of those onto the necklace that we made. And I will link that video in the cards. If you guys didn't get to see it, you have no idea what I'm talking about. Uh, I'll link it for you in the cards and in the description. Okay, I got a little zip of tea. I had to start drinking tea, I guess. <laughs> All right. So here's our beads. And I don't know how, honestly, this is going to look with the black and the um, like white and clear, but I kind of think it's going to look kind of cool. If it doesn't, we can always switch to a clear. I think I have a, I think I have a pearl white, actually. Um, both of these are available on um, Jesse James beads if you're looking for them. This is the pearl white and this is the black. So if the black doesn't look good, we will switch it out. And this is a new roll, so I got to get a hold of it here somehow. Try to. There we go. I had to go put the baby gate up for Mr. Bunsen because he was just really being naughty, taking things that didn't belong to him and doing all kinds of naughtiness. So if you hear some commotion, that's Mr. Bunsen upstairs being upset. <laughs> all right, so I am just cut off a little piece here for our bracelet. I have about, I don't even know. Hey. I've been looking for this froggy thing. What do I have? I would guess about a foot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 11 inches. Just about a foot, which is probably more than you're going to need because we got a pre stretch. So I'm just pre stretching this cord. Um, you always want to make sure that you pre stretch um, the elasticity. Okay. All right, so do I have a bead stopper? I do. Look at me being on top of it today. So I'm going to put my bead stopper on the end and I'm just going to start stringing these up. Now, 
I was thinking about maybe making putting charms on this. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. We'll see. But I did get I thought maybe charms would be nice, but I'm not sure. So I'm just gonna start stringing these on easy peasy any way you want. You could use them right off the strand if you want to. Um but it's up to you. So I'm just looking at what we got. I think I am gonna keep these uh pearls. Are these these are like acrylic pearls? I'm gonna keep those inside the uh the bead caps. And these ones are different. These ones are more like a rondelle shape. These ones are more round. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. So I think maybe what I'll do is I'll put these three in the middle. Because I kind of like that. Yeah, that seems good. Okay. So. Da -da 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 Just stringing. I think I'll put one of these big sparkly spacers. Oh, here we go. I want to put that one on there. Now I have this one. Hmm. Decisions, decisions, I guess. So, this is actually going to be the back of our bracelet because um, I like to work this part as the front because that's where I personally like to tie my knot is in the front. I find that it's um, easier to hide for me because then I know what the last bead I'm going to be putting on is. And so anyway, that's the dealio with that. So I'm going to put one of these in the back. And... I'm just kind of stringing however I see fit. I don't know that I'm actually really making a repetitive pattern back here, but that's kind of how I roll. I just like to string them on and then kind of make a decorative portion in the front. Oh, there's some more little tiny spacers. If I put a clear one. Mm hmm Do do do. Maybe I can use those little tiny ones. Let me see. Use this little tiny one. Maybe I'll put those in in the front. That could be cute. I'll just keep all four of them for the front just in case that I want to put them there. So if you have never made a stretch bracelet with elasticity, it's actually really easy. Um, a lot like the main question that people have about um elasticity that i hear about really is um do i want to put that there no is the knot tying and so there's a lot of different things to consider when tying knots with any kind of elastic cord, really, and we're going to talk about that momentarily. Uh, so I want you to see what I'm doing here, and this is just personally how I do it as a design situation. So I've done the back. This will function as the back part of the bracelet right here, which honestly, I should put a spacer right there. Let me do that. Just looks kind of funny having too clear with no spacer. Oh, I could always put a charm thing here too. 
anyways focus <laughs> so these three are the three that I wanted to be my focal right so now you have to remember that you are gonna have to hide a knot what I do is I try to make it as easy as possible for myself because there is no point in trying to make it harder <laughs> so I put this one on this side and I do want to use this other sparkly on this side just because I like the sparkle And then I'll put this other focal on here. So what I'm doing is I'm working in towards the middle. Now this one as the middle one doesn't really matter which side you put it on. But I'm going to put it on this side. So then when we go to tie our knot, this is going to be the focal portion of our bracelet. But because this focal bead has that larger hole, you're going to be able to utilize that to hide this knot. Okay, whereas with these little crystals, uh... I don't think it'll fit in there maybe but just easier with a larger hole bead okay so I'm just making it easy for myself all right so then now what we do on every package I'm gonna zoom you out a little bit on every package of the elasticity it shows you how to tie the knot okay and so this is the knot they suggest this is the knot um, that really does work good for this cording so this is um, like a surgeon's knot so, kind of. It's like a kind of a surgeon's knot. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to make sure that your strands are evened up here. Now here's the thing you have to know. if Because you, you can stretch this a lot. And if you stretch it really tight and then tie your knot, your bracelet is not going to have that much give. So this is what I hear often is they're like, oh, I tried that cord and it snapped. It's probably because you want to leave a little excess stretchability in your bracelet. Not too much, not too little. It's like Goldilocks, okay? So what I do is I am just going to give it a little stretch. And I'm going to make sure that it has enough. Um, it's going to be tight right now, but that's okay. We can loosen it up when we pull it down. So now part of this is that you have to go around once. And this is why it is also important. Oh, that one didn't go around. It's okay. You go around once. It's also important to pre-stretch your cording. Okay. So now I'm going to go around twice so this is what this means you go around once and you go around twice okay so I'm gonna pull that in there okay so now here is where you're gonna get your tension this is where you're gonna make the tension so you're gonna you got this all this twisty twisty stuff you're gonna pull it down you know pretty close there and leaving leaving a little bit but you're going to be able to tighten it up, but you don't want it so tight that it doesn't stretch because then when people stretch, it's going to bust, right? So you just pull it down there. Now here's what locks it in place is when you pull this way. Okay, so you give a little tug this way here. Okay, so you pull here, tug this way, you know. Now, we need to have the cement. Where is that at? Hmm, hold on one second. Okay. This is my GS Hypo cement. We had a little situation, but don't worry. It's fine. That's always been like that. <laughs> so I'm going to move this out of the way. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. Now, this is a, if you're not familiar, this is a GS Hypo cement. And this is uh, what I would recommend to use for stretch bracelets. This is, um, you don't want to use super glue. If you use super glue, it's going to dry the cord out and that's going to snap the knot. You can try to use an E6000, however, there's not a precision tip on an E6000. But this is um, a good glue to use because it doesn't completely dry down. It has a little bit of like epoxy kind of feeling and it's going to move with your knot and not bust. So that's why it's, you just give it a little squeeze, it's got this precision tip on it. And a little goes a long way, so you don't got to be, you know, super whatever about it. But you just put a little on the knot, okay? Now, this does take some time to dry. I usually leave mine overnight. 
that's an excessive amount of time but you know this is the hardest part here with this is getting that little needle back in there close that up now what you're gonna do is you know you don't want that cement touching your beads up really you're gonna trim get that out of here because it will smudge up your beads now what you're gonna do is you're gonna work that knot into that bead okay and also bring your beads over like so okay so now here's what we have now before you go stretching this all up you're gonna want to let it dry a little bit at least you know um, but this is the focal portion completely in the bead when you pull it out after that dries you know it's not gonna come out of there um, so and and it has you can tell it has it has give so when you pull it it's gonna stretch now I just wanted to briefly talk about this this is um, the one millimeter elasticity this can be found on Jesse James beads matching our necklace now I know that it's not super matchy matchy but it has the, the matching bead it's white and clear I'm for it now on to the next I have these two little guys and I believe these came in there if I can remember right and I have some cage beads easy peasy making these match now these ones I'm actually gonna save for a different pair of earrings but these ones all I'm gonna do for this is I'm going to let's see do I have a gunmetal oval dump ring? I ah, sure do I get two gunmetal oval jump rings because those are the kind of kidney wires that I have. I also have these um, little ear wires too, which are really nice. Um, we'll probably use those on the next set. So it's kind of up to you, but I'm just going to put these on kidney wires because I have them. Just going to open up an oval jump ring. Find a place that I like. Now, the only thing to note about um, turning your cage beads into charms is that if you are going to, like, say, like right now, you're going to make a pair of earrings, you're going to want them to hang on um, kind of the same place. So if you look on here, there's a, like, a square, and then there is a triangle in a diamond shape which is also kind of a square but you just want to make sure that you're looking for that same shape on the other side so you're going to want to hook right here to make sure they're hanging the same way well let me see they'll probably fit on there fine okay i'm just going to take my kidney wire and open it up and i'm just going to pass through this oval jump ring sitting in there like that and what I do is I just grab up my little round nose I mean you could use your chain nose too if you want to but I'm just gonna give this just like a little indent here so that it's not gonna come out of there because I wear a lot of kidney wires and sometimes they come they come out you know if you don't uh, squeeze that up so and then I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna give it a slight bend so that it stays in there really well. Okay, do the other side. Easy, easy. Put him in there. Now on these kidney wires, you could also you you know add little beads or whatever you want to do there to the top portion. I think we did that in a in another video recently where we put little seed beads on here. Or wire wrapped it or something, I can't remember. Okay, get that little pull. Alright, so now, there we go. We've got our matching set. So these are still, this is our second project out of that Meteor Shower um, little bundle that I showed you. Because these are also from Meteor Shower. 
This one is also from Meteor Shower and it had the two strands. So we got the necklace and then this, these guys. Okay. So um, I will get you some photos and get you a little video. Once this is dried up, I'll give it this. I mean, you know, give you the stretch situation um, and all that. And I think I'm going to do another video featuring the uh, chain tassel earrings that I originally planned to do because uh, I don't want to make the video too long. So I'm just going to go ahead and make another video for that. But that's what we got going on. Let me flip you guys over. Hey, and there we go. So we got our super cute little earrings and our bracelet. So I have a little tiny wrist. So sorry about that. I'm not going to put the earrings on, but, um, Easy peasy and it matches. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, please give your girl a thumbs up. Um, leave me a comment. Subscribe to my channel. And I will be putting out more Jesse James Bead videos. I, well, I put them out every week. Um, we recently changed it to they're coming out on Thursday. So I, I put out videos on Thunderhorse Ascendant on what day? I recently changed the schedule to Tuesday and Thursday. So Tuesday and Thursday is kind of the schedule. Anything additional is just like, yay. Um, join us for Morning Coffee Club. We have Morning Coffee Coffee Club Monday through Friday, somewhere between 9 and 10 a.m. It's live on YouTube. Um, I generally put up a little post in my um, on my Facebook for Thunderhurst Ascendant I'm in the group so you know when I'm doing it I'll usually give you like a little heads up like hey and um, you'll also see a little YouTube uh, pending video in there so easy peasy um, thank you guys for tuning in thank you for supporting me I'm so grateful to be here and I will see you guys again next time